My name is Arturo Villarreal. I'm from San Jose. All right, you guys. Um, I, I teach ethnic studies and anthropology at Evergreen Valley College. Uh, I have uh, written a couple of books. One I co-authored with uh, Nanette Regua, titled uh, Mexicans in San Jose. But I also wrote a book on Jose Manuel Gonzalez, the Apache mayor of San Jose. He was the second mayor of San Jose. And he came down with the De Anza expedition, so he was a founder of San Jose as well. And he built the what's mistakenly called the Peralta Adobe House, uh, which I understand will eventually be called the Gonzalez Peralta Adobe House. Uh, so you know, he's getting his due now that the book has come out, and that was the whole purpose of writing the, uh, the book. Dr. Martinez was to make sure that uh, Jose Manuel Gonzalez was not just recognized. As this person who built a, you know, which mistakenly called the Peralta Adobe House, but he built it. He was the first resident. You know, he died there. He was a, a poblador, a founder, and he was the second mayor of San Jose. So uh, it's it's so nice now that they have new signage in front of. Uh, this place that gives him a little bit more credit. It's going to take a while before they change the plaque. That takes more doing, but uh, eventually I'm hoping they will and it'll become again the uh, Gonzalez that I'll go. Dr. Martinez, thank you so, so much for chronicling our history. Appreciate you. We talk about Chicano history, but we don't talk about grassroots history. And you long have written about grassroots people. I say, when we talked about the college youth movement, you talked about the non-college youth movement, and you've written so much about Black Berets and all that, uh, Chicano Park. Will you tell us a little bit about that work that you've done in, in well, talking about our grassroots community, yeah, well, you especially know, youth? Well, you know, uh, Dr. Martinez, I have to give credit to uh, Dr. Jose Carrasco. <laughs> Uh, the late great uh, Mauro Chavez and because they along with Jeff Hall put together a Chicano oral history class at San Jose State way back in the day and I had the good fortune of being their student and it was by way of this uh, excellent Chicano oral history which is online uh, available to everyone uh, that I was able to uh, interview uh, people who were involved in the Chicano movement. And this led to me eventually uh, writing my master's thesis on the Black Berets because as a result of this class, I began to meet various activists and I began to meet some of the Black Berets like Chilmo Candelaria, like, like uh, Henry Dominguez, Jesse Dominguez. And so the result was, uh, this, this became my master's thesis. And as you know, because you were so uh, involved in the Chicano movement as well, Dr. Martinez, uh, there were so many uh, activists here and so much uh, activity. Right. And it's yet to all be chronicled, but uh, hopefully, you know, th there's a new generation of, of, of uh, scholars coming around that'll, you know, address the unwritten history. And once again, I want to thank you, Dr. Martinez, for documenting all this for us. So tell us the name of your dissertation that I assume can be found at the in the San Jose State Library. It's also available online. Just type oh, okay. up my name, name and type up Black Ber Black Berets for Justice. Yeah. By Arturo Villarreal. Yes. Gracias. No, I was dead. Uh, hello, I'm Doctor, that's weird. Uh, Doctor Alejandro de Susara. Uh, greetings to the La Raza Historical Society of Santa Clara Valley. Um, we just concluded our Eastside Dreams event panel with uh, conversation with scholars, uh, looking at kind of Eastside San Jose, looking at Me Mexican Americans, looking at Chicanos, looking at Latinos in the Eastside, looking at Chicanos, Latinos, Mexican Americans in the in the San Jose area as a whole. It was a very successful event. It was a full room, lots of great questions. Uh, I got to meet two other great panelists and keep recording history, uh, collect your stories, send them out. You have Dr. Ramon Martinez here, who's always interested in talking to people, always interested in collecting information. You have great resources here at the Martin Luther King Library, people willing to take stories. And so we're important, we're part of the city. Uh, we've always been part of the city and let's make it known. Hello, I'm Mario Madrid. My father was Sonny Madrid, the creator, publisher, editor, owner of Lowrider Magazine. Come to the library and check out the Eastside exhibit, which also features part of the lowriding 
cruising scene of East San Jose and San Jose in general. But you know, right now that we have the the cruising the cruising signs taken down, you know, check out a little bit of the images from the past and some of the history of, of the area. So here in San Jose, uh, we have a strong Aztec, Mexica, traditional Central Mexican dance, you know, tradition and culture. Um, it, this is a uh, well, this is not part of that. This is also Navajo, or I'm, you know, I'm sorry, Apache Crown dancer. But uh, here in San Jose, we have a strong dance culture. You know, it's not just danza, it's not just folklorico. There's there's a, a culture that comes with it. It comes from Mexico, and it arrived in California, and it kind of uh, melded into the Chicano movement. So it's become a very strong part of that. You know, uh, a lot a lot of uh, student activists are take part of it. A lot of people who just value the culture. A lot of people who looking for something to identify. You know, part of a part of Mexico. And uh, to me, it's a, it's important because it, it gives us a window to our past and to what's out there. Not necessarily just to do that exact thing, but to give an awareness of things exist, you know, within our culture that can enrich us and help us and give us an understanding of who we are as Chicanos, Mexican Americans, you know, however we want to call ourselves. And, uh, you know, to know that our, our people, ourselves, our neighbors, our, our gente, have done a lot of things that are noteworthy. Hi, I'm Dr. Ramon Martinez, and I'm here talking to Mario Madrid about Lowrider magazine that his father, Sonny Madrid, published back in the 60s and 70s. But one of the things that we're always talking about is, you know, today you have a hundred labels that you could call yourself. You should call yourself Latinx, Chicano, Latino, Ra uh, Chusma. The point is, is whoever you are, you will not be clear about who you are until you understand your indigenous roots from Mexico, the Aztecs and everything else. Everything else. Sometimes we use the word Mesoamerica because there's lots and lots to the Latino background. You know, some of the things that are important to us that we don't realize are, are like Mexican culture is, you know, heavily, if not majority, native influence from our, from our past. Look at our food. You know, it's corn-based. It's corn, beans, and squash is, our, you know, important aspects of our food. There's lots of indigenous words in our language, you know, in the Spanish language now. Uh, the cultures and traditions of Mexico on, in the different regions, you know, they have large influence from indigenous things. And, you know, the, the Europeans came here to our ancestors that were that were here already and you know they came to us to our ancestors and the culture is still there it's just mixed mixed together to the point where you can't really identify what's what but we're all those things you know and just just like all the different names that we have mexican american chicano latino native american we're all that all you know and to embrace all of that and not to divide ourselves and soft hate or, or separate ourselves, you know, realize and love who we are as a culture together, as one.